Hello everybody, I'm the Tax Pro and today we're going to talk about vendor credits. So what exactly is a vendor credit? How do we record them? How do we apply them, etc. So a vendor credit is something where a vendor is going to provide you with a credit on your account for one reason or another. So maybe you ordered some supplies from them and some of it came damaged or maybe they didn't pack everything that they were supposed to and you didn't get everything that you ordered. Maybe you have some equipment, it came damaged, and instead of replacing those items, the vendor says, you know what, we'll just give you a credit on your account to apply to future items. This can also happen when, say, you order something and then you return it. Okay, so a lot of times you'll have vendors where maybe you, you pay them once a month and you'll have multiple orders from that vendor for supplies or materials or pieces of equipment, whatever, parts of something that you're manufacturing. And so you'll order from them throughout the month, but then you'll also return items throughout the month. And when you return those items, you'll get a vendor credit on your account. So I'm gonna show you how vendor credits work, and then we're gonna go over some of the kind of odd workarounds that we have to do in QuickBooks Online when it comes to vendor credits. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a bill. I'm not gonna walk you through step-by-step -step creating this bill just because this is in a, another video. Um, so I have Belmar Professional Products. I've never used them before, but I've decided I'm gonna use Belmar and I'm going to order some products from Belmar. So I'm gonna have bill number. From Belmar, I'm gonna get some reagents for a manufacturing process. Now, again, you know, if, if you're creating a bill, you can have some memos, some attachments, and, and have a longer list of items that you have actually purchased. I'm not going to go through that process. I'm just going to record the bill. So I've purchased $1,250 worth of these reagents from Belmar. Come to find out, when they show up in the mail, $200 have been damaged. So I call them and I say, hey, these bottles have busted or something wasn't sealed properly, something happened. And they say, okay, we'll give you a vendor credit for $200. So how would I record that? It's a couple of steps we can take here. So you can use the plus new button right here and you can go to vendor credit. The other option we can do is we can go to the actual vendor tab. So we would go to expenses and vendors and we would find Belmar and we would use this new transaction button and say vendor credit. So let's say that come September is when we receive this credit. Okay. I am gonna put it in the same account as the initial bill. I get that question a lot. Where should we put the vendor credit? You're gonna put it in the same account. So what that's gonna do is on August 12th, when we have that bill, our supplies and materials is going to increase by $1,250. Now on September 5th, when we get our vendor credit, that supplies and materials is going to decrease. Okay, so we can have damaged reagents from shipping, credit from vendor. So we can have a description here. Maybe we'll have a reference number. You definitely want to get a reference number if you are calling in and you don't get like a physical um, or a PDF copy of a return slip, right? Or of a vendor credit. Make sure you record your reference number. You can also have a memo here or you can put an attachment. So we're going to save and close. What that's going to do here in QuickBooks Online to the Belmar Professional Products account. So we're gonna have our bill and we're gonna have our vendor credit. Our open balance is going to reflect this $1,250 less the $200, okay? So now we're gonna talk about how we apply our vendor credit. Now, if let's say we get a bill September 15th for us to pay, and we're gonna pay this bill here. We're gonna to go to mark as paid, okay? Or you can go through and you can do pay bills, um, whatever your preferred bill payment method is. What's gonna happen when you go into Belmar Professional Products 
is it's going to give you the option. It's, it's automatically actually going to suggest that you apply this vendor credit to this bill. Okay. And it is going to show this $1,050 as your payment amount. Now, let's just say that I actually ended up paying this bill on the 15th of August before we had this vendor credit. So I'm gonna deselect the vendor credit. It's no longer there, okay? I can do this as well. So I'm gonna show you two separate methods. First one is gonna be using the credit, which is automatically gonna to default to this. We save and close this way with the vendor credit applied our open balance is zero dollars and this vendor credit is not going to be available to use again. Now we could say we're not going to have this credit. So I'm going to deselect this credit. It's going to have the amount paid at $1,250. Let's say that we paid this on August 15th. Okay. I'm going to save and close. What this does is we have not used that vendor credit now. So we have an open balance of negative $200. Okay, let me show you what this looks like in your accounts payable summary. So your accounts payable aging summary is going to show you the amount that you owe every vendor. Oh, this is pulling for today. Let's pull it for September 13th. You'll notice here, it's negative $200, right? So we owe Belmar negative $200. They technically owe us money, okay? You also notice this Platinum Corporation also has a negative 100, so we must have a vendor credit there. Bluebird, we owe them money. Um, but Belmar, we have a negative $200. A couple of things can happen, right? We can save that vendor credit and apply it to future bills, which you would just follow that bill pay process when you're ready to apply it. Or we might say, you know what, Belmar, we didn't like the supplies that we got from you. We want you to issue us a check. Okay, so they're going to issue us a check. Now, what we're going to do here is we now need to record that we've received the check. This is a little bit tricky. This takes a little bit of a thought process and a couple extra steps than what we normally see in QuickBooks Online. So let's say we got a check. We're going to make a bank deposit to deposit this check in the bank. So we're going to go to this plus new button and go to bank deposit. So we have this check from Belmar for $200. We're going to put it in our primary checking account, okay? So you can click down and you can add different bank accounts. We're going to have the primary checking. We're going to deposit it on the 16th of September, okay? It's not going to have any of these payments here. It's going to be right here, add funds to this deposit. So we're gonna have Belmar Professional Products. You have to make sure that you get the vendor in there. We're gonna take this to accounts payable. We've already recorded the reduction in supplies, okay? Now we need to clear this out of what we owe them, which is your accounts payable. So this might be under credit check. You can, you know, you don't have to put a description. You can if you want. Payment method. I'm gonna say that it's a check. Again, you don't necessarily have to fill this in. I'm gonna put the check number just for my records. I'm gonna put $200. Okay, so we've received $200. I'm depositing on the 16th of September. The Belmar Professional Products going to accounts payable. What this is gonna do is this is gonna cancel out at $200. So we're gonna save and close. Now, and this is pulling up as of today. That's why it's showing us $1,250. The problem with this method is that it still is going to show on our AP aging summary. That is because we have yet to apply the check to the vendor credit, okay? So it's gonna mess up our AP aging summary for a second. It's gonna show a zero. This means anytime you see a zero dollar on either a payable or a receivables aging summary in QuickBooks Online, it means that in that vendor 
or that customer, if we're talking about receivables, items haven't been applied properly. Okay, so here we can see that vendor credit and that deposit have not been matched. Let me show you what it looks like in the vendor center. So it's showing a $0 open balance and it's showing an overdue payment, but these two items technically really haven't been cleared from each other. So how do we do that? Okay, this is a little tricky. We need to close out this vendor credit so that this stops popping up on our payable summary. We don't want any zeros on the payable summary or on the receivable summary unless we literally have not been able to apply the spender credit for some reason. We can go to new transaction and you can go to the expense account or the expense transaction. We can add this deposit. When we do that, what's going to happen? It's going to just pull the deposit up. We can then apply this vendor credit, okay? So we can cancel these out. The amount has to equal $0, okay? Because this isn't a true cash transaction, right? This isn't a true cash transaction that we're gonna be seeing. This is us offsetting the deposit and the vendor credit. We can save and close. Now, still looks the same, right? We have this $0 open balance. We have this weird $0 bill payment right here. But we go to our reports. We go to our payable summary. And we look at the proper date. Again, it's pulling up that $1,250 because of the date. Belmar is no longer on there. Okay, Omar's gone. We took care of that $0 on there. That's how you apply a vendor credit when you get a check to clear it out. Okay, it's the extra step. It's kind of obnoxious. Um, there's not really a, a good shorter workaround. That's how we can clear a check that comes in to be applied against a vendor credit. That is all I have for now. And I will see you guys next time.